Hi. <laughs> so Hi. I obviously agree with a lot of what you said, but my question is like, um, as much as we can agree that gender is relative and that you can Id identify as different genders and present as different genders and the two don't necessarily have to agree with each other or the two don't necessarily have to align, but how do you then like exist in a world that is constantly asking for your identity and like making sure that you have to like tell them what it is when gender is often way too complicated for us to actually be able to give like a succinct answer as to like what your gender is. I say that last part again. Gender is often too complicated for us to be able to give a short, succinct answer when we're asked what our gender is and like how do we exist as non-binary individuals or whatever really our identities are in a world that's constantly asking what it is. Good question. Why do we need to know? What is it that, all right, have, remember the last time you saw somebody, you couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman, really? Remember how you couldn't stop staring until you decided? You know, it's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you just gotta watch, you gotta know. This is called gender attribution. It's, it's an aspect of gender, we all do it. We look at someone and go, that's a man, that's a woman. And nowadays we go, I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, gender attribution. Why do we have to know? We can look at someone and go, we don't need to know their age. We can look at someone and go, we don't need to know their religion. We don't need to know a person's politics, particularly to get along with a person. But we insist on knowing someone's gender. I think this has to do with... Uh, compulsory heterosexuality. As long as we define our, it can actually be compulsory homosexuality too. As long as we define our sexual orientation by the gender of another person or persons. When we look at someone, we're gonna go, am I allowed to be attracted to them? That's what we really wanna know. Um, sexuality is so much more than gender. Sexuality is doing whatever the fuck is fun for you. And there's a lot of things to do. <laughs> what is the need? Can anybody answer me? What is the need we have to A, figure out someone's gender or ask them what their gender is or even tell what their gender is on, on the other side of it. Why do I need you to validate my gender? These are questions I'm going to be looking at in my new book. It's a good question. Thank you for asking, but the question itself needs to be questioned. Yes, it's difficult, so why put ourselves through all that trouble? It's not at all necessary. There's a person sitting, standing in front of you. Matters not what their gender is. There are things that matter more than that. Fair? Okay. Do you have any advice for parents raising children in, in understanding gender? In what gender? Understanding, teaching them. Understanding gender, sure, sure, sure. Um, we're going through an amazing time right now. Uh, kids are determining their own gender left, right, and center, because it says they can on the internet. Um, <laughs> so I'm for that, and I'm, I, I, I'm also cautionary about that. Let's say you have a young son and he's three or four years old. And he comes to you and says, Mom, Dad, I'm a girl. You go, okay. Oh, you're a girl. What does girl mean to you? Look, we've got a four-year-old. Gender is something that adults don't really understand. We can't expect a four-year-old to understand. And so what we explain is, yes, you can, you're a girl, no problem. 
Tomorrow you can be a boy. Day after you can be a girl again. You can decide you're not a boy, you're not a girl, you're a, you're a purple unicorn. Not with sparkles. That's a gender too. I think what we need in terms of parenting children, whether or not they say they're a different gender than the one they are, is that they understand they have options. Again, we're living beyond a binary. Kids don't have to be one or the other. You may want to insist that they be one or the other, but they're going to grow up and do whatever the fuck they want, whether you like it or not. So give them the option. Let them know they have the option. That's kind of, that's what I would say. I know that people want to raise children. There's always talk about, oh, I want to raise children to be gender free. Well, that's a really hard thing to do. We all grow up to be one or two of our parents. Everybody. You're all going to grow up to be your mom or your dad. That's just the way it is. Um, so if you want to raise your children to be gender free, gender neutral, you have to be that yourself and give them an example. Children learn gender. We all learn gender. It's not natural. Most of it is not natural. Fair? Okay. You said earlier that um, the definitive truth about gender will bring a whole lot of peace. Um, and elsewhere you wrote that the best way to break a binary is to propose a viable third, a viable alternative. What I'm, I think what I'm looking to hear more of is what do you do when your proposed viable third uh, seems to take away somebody else's peace, which is the binary. You know, I, I feel like um, kind of uh, heterosexual white America is, is screaming about their peace being taken away right now um, in the election of, of continued election of officials like Donald Trump. Um, and what do you do when, you, when you're proposed third option, somebody saying, no, that's my peace. The binary is my peace. Um, how do you engage that? I suppose? Very similar to the very first question. Because I believe, and my truth of gender is without a binary. My truth of gender is multiplicity of gender. My truth of gender is that gender is a choice. My truth of gender is that gender is fluid. Um, doesn't negate your truth of gender that gender is two and two only. Why does everybody have to believe what we believe? I wrote a book in 1994 Four came out called Gender Outlaw on Men, Women, and the Rest of Us. And in there, I was talking about, because I called myself a not man, not woman. There was no word for non-binary and non-binary. I called myself not man, not woman. And I made this case for gender being fluid, for gender being a choice, for gender being more than two. And in that book, I proceeded to lay in another binary, unknowingly. I, and I said, non-binary, these weren't the words because we didn't have words like non-binary, but living non-binary gender is good and true. Binary gender is fake and not good for you. And I laid that in with that book. Thank goodness I had the chance to learn otherwise. Um on the road with Caitlyn Jenner and six trans women who taught me that, yeah, it's okay to be binary identified trans. You can be a man, you can be a woman. That's their truth. I didn't need everybody to believe my own truth. You could just let people enjoy their truth of gender. It doesn't affect you. Happily, I was asked to update and revise Gender Outlaw. A new, new edition came out this past November where I've corrected all of that. And I'm more into this idea now, uh, and I got it across in the book, that, yeah, gender is what you, what eases your suffering to believe. Does that speak to what you're asking? Thank you so much for your talk. 
Um, I'm really excited about the time that we're in right now. I'm raising a, she, I believe she identifies as a daughter. She's two, so I don't know exactly when these things will come into play, and we're just trying to, you know, give her room. And um, I have a question about words, and um, I was taught when I moved to New York City by some well, I'm so glad, grateful that I had the opportunity to meet some people who taught me that it was okay to ask people what their personal pronouns would be. And I saw on the Creative Morning website that you were referred to it in different ways with your personal pronouns. How do you like to use personal pronouns and how do you think that that will impact um, you know, where we are right now in terms of understanding gender? I, I, I have many minds on this one. Um, I don't really care uh, at this point. Many people do. And when I first transitioned, it was important that I receive validation from other people. Now, it's not that important whether you think I'm a man or a woman or neither. It doesn't matter much to me. So what we need to do is find out what matters to the person. And, you know, are they a person that it matters what I think of their gender? Okay, then in order to show respect, I would then ask you what your pronoun is. Um, I like the pronoun they and them because that could mean you're a man, you're a woman, you're neither. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a non-gendered third person pronoun. Um, again, the question is, is it the pronoun we want to know? Are we really asking, what, well, what pronoun? Or are we asking, what the fuck are you? <laughs> this is important. Um, I think we need to acknowledge our own curiosity and go, I, could you kindly tell me, what gender you are. I know, frankly, I know a whole lot of people who look like men, look like women, and claim the, the, the identity of non-binary. That means, well, I'm not a man, I'm not a woman. My gender expression might be man or woman. And in fact, that's where I stand. I'm not what's called gender queer. Gender queer is this beautiful multiplicity and fluidity of gender. A whirling confabulation of feathers and leather and stripes and plaid and, and boots and lipstick and you name it, whatever, and beards. Um, <laughs> that's not me. I'm, I'm old school. My expression is much more along, much more conservative. My gender expression. My gender identity is non-binary. Not a man and I'm not a woman. Uh, you can refer to me as she. You can refer to me as he. It, it doesn't matter. Find out how much it matters to the person. Thank you. Sure. I, this is a res like a, a follow-up question to a question that somebody asked over here. Um, I want to say that I really respect that you went back and kind of updated your Gender Out Loud book. Um, I think for me, being a person that's not famous and I don't have people watching me, I, I feel like when I am given new information, I'm allowed to grow as an individual and in peace. How, and this is outside of just like gender or anything in general, how do you, how do you feel like, what is the process for you with the new information? Like, how do you kind of process that and how do you grow with that information when there are so many people that are kind of watching you and like falling over your words and waiting to be inspired? You know, how do you kind of grow as an individual while still inspiring other people to go and find out new information? I hope that question makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we're all of us in that situation now with social media. People know who you are. And as soon as you say something, people are gonna go, oh, and your name is? Coin. Coin, like a coin? quarter. Yeah. Okay. That's what coin believes. That's who coin is. We now know. Uh, and then a year later, you go, well, not really. How do you shift? How do you go? You know, I've been looking at this. 
And I, I think it's more something else. That's what we don't have in our current, in Trump. Trump does not acknowledge mistakes. A good leader would. A good public person would. A good person of any kind is going to say, I've changed my mind. Everything changes. There, there's nothing that doesn't change. Your gender is changing every single moment you learn something new about men and women. That changes your gender, shifts it just a little bit. Uh, you change because you're aging. Uh, on a subatomic level, everything is changing and whirling and in complete motion. Just because we don't see it that way doesn't mean it's not happening. To insist that something is rigid and the same and right on top of it, that's the mark of a very scared human being who needs, needs complete control. And no one's got complete control. So the deal is to say, boy, was I wrong. And, and I'm going to do my very best to change it which is, thank goodness, I had the chance to do with the update of that book. That was the scariest thing about writing a book, that, that, that I would say something that would be wrong and it would be etched in stone, and there it was. Uh, I'm sure that what I'm saying now today, in three years, is going to be wrong. And I'm going to have to qualify it even more. That's the, the deeper our understanding goes the more we do have to change things. Being in the position I am as an elder in the trans community, yes, my words have more weight, which means people can get hurt by them or really supported by them. So now, I try to go for solutions that allow possibilities. This is what I'm finally, finally getting the, the idea of. And so, gender as relative, and the idea of a definitive truth of gender, and an arguable truth of gender, that admits a whole lot of possibility. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have reached this point, and I do thank the Dalai Lama and Tibetan Buddhism um, for, for, for this particular approach to gender. Is that? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay.